Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Malak from the 12 Tribes United. All right, we're going to continue our lesson on the role of women and men in marriage. And hopefully you brothers and sisters will get enlightened. All right. This is 1 Timothy 2 and 9. In like manner also, women adorn themselves in modest apparel. What is modest apparel? A long dress, your whole body covered, your head covered, so forth and so on. You know, a dress, a loose fitting dress, is supposed to, the shortest, the longest is supposed to, it's supposed to be from the, supposed to cover the thighs, meaning it's supposed to be below the knee. It could be all the way down to her ankles, it could be to her knee, as long as it doesn't show the thighs. It's supposed to be a long dress, all right? Long, loose fitting dress, you know, no cleavage showing, no body, no extreme body part showing, and so forth and so on. All right, that's modest apparel. Not skinny jeans, thin jeans and booty shorts and all that, that's not modest apparel. All right, not for a woman. With shamefacedness and sobriety, meaning the shamefacedness, meaning shyness, humility, and sobriety. She's not supposed to be walking around drunk, all right, high or whatever. Also sober in the mind, meaning clear-headed. Not with braided hair. Braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array. So, some would say that means a woman is not supposed to have her hair braided or gold or pearls or costly array. Now, the woman in the ancient world used to wear this. This was an Israelite custom. But which becometh, but which becometh woman professing godliness with good works. So we suppose a woman's supposed to focus more on her inner than her outer. Does that mean she cannot wear, you know, jewelry and so forth and so on? No, because that's an ancient custom of our forefathers. It just means that everything is supposed to be, a woman's supposed to be, uh, you know, clear-headed. You know, she's supposed to be, she's supposed to focus more on her spirit, not walk around with fake weaves and so forth and so on. She's supposed to focus on her spirit, all right? Her and beauty is supposed to be in her spirit. All right? So, it says, let the woman learn in silence. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. So when a woman learns the scriptures, she's supposed to be silent and be subjected to who? Subjected to Christ, subjected to the scriptures, subjected to her husband. Not jumping up, hooping and hollering and foaming at the mouth as they do in these churches. But I suffer a woman not to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So a woman's not supposed to be in no position over a man to usurp authority. All right. When it says not to teach, it means a man. And it says it right here in the scripture. A woman could teach another woman. She could teach children, but she cannot teach a man. That's out of order. For Adam was first formed in Eve. So Adam was the first one formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. So the scriptures say Adam was not deceived. But the woman being deceived was in a transgression. So Adam wasn't deceived, but Eve was deceived. Why does it say Adam was not deceived? Since he partook of the same sin. Because Adam willfully partook of that fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. All right? He was not deceived. He did it willfully. Eve was deceived because Satan tricked her and deceived her into eating of that tree. Even though she knew not to eat it, Satan manipulated things and, you know, deceived her. So Adam was not deceived. Doesn't mean Adam wasn't in the sin. Not, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. So, so here it is. The scriptures are saying that a woman is going to be saved in what? And childbearing means she got to be married and have children. If they continue in faith and charity with ho in holiness and sobriety. So it doesn't say just a man keep the commandments and the woman don't keep the commandments. Both of them got to keep the commandments together. All right. The man and the woman. That's what that means. All right. Some people read, oh, the woman just saved the childbearing. So a woman would just lay around and not keep the commandments. Just because she has a baby, she's going to be saved. No. It says, if they, meaning the man, and, the man and his wife, continue in faith and holiness and so forth and so on. 
All right. The man and the woman has to keep the commandments, not just, you know, not just the man. All right. Let's go to. Uh, Using First Timothy, let's go to First Peter three, and one. First Peter chapter three and one. First Peter three and one. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands. So once again, it's telling wives to be subjection to their own husbands. That if any obey not the word, so if you have any woman that, that doesn't obey the word, they also may be without the word, they also may be without the word, be won by the conversion of the wives. So here it is, you got women that don't keep the commandments, that is out there in the world, and new sisters coming in, that they don't follow this, they don't follow their husband, they don't obey their husband. So how do these women be won over? By watching other wives you know, be in order with their husbands. And eventually what happens? They, they become, they get in order, all right? From watching the righteous woman with their husbands. All right, let's go down to three. Oh, no, 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 let's, let's, let's read on. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. So a righteous woman is supposed to have a chaste conversation, not talking about basketball wives, not talking about, you know, some new rapper that came out as a lesbian, none of this foolishness that women be talking about. Chase conversation, you're talking about what? The scriptures, the food of the spirit. Coupled with fear, fear of who? Fear of the Most High, fear of Christ. That's why they obey their husbands, that's why they do what the scriptures say. That's a woman's role in marriage, all right? Your, her job is to obey her husband. Who's adorning, let it not be of the outward adorning of, who's adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating of the hair, Meaning, don't let it be a braiding the hair. Here it is, you worry more about your hair than you do your spirit. And of wearing of gold and of putting up a ray, up a ray. So don't let your adorning just be outwardly. Gold, silver, you know, you know, you got very, very, you got super nice clothes. You got, you know, obviously, if someone says that that means a woman don't, can't braid her hair and wear gold, they would also have to say a woman don't wear any clothes and we just wear a woman gotta be in, in modest apparel. So obviously it's not, it's, it's saying, it's not saying a woman can't adorn herself on the outside, you know, but what it's saying is that don't let it just be that. You know, make sure it be, you know, on the inside. Make sure she's beautiful on the inside. All right, righteous on the inside. Not with all this gold and silver and jewelry and all this, you know, extravagant hair and here it is, she won't check her spirit, all right? Beauty comes from within, not from without, not from outside, all right? All right? But let it be the hidden man of the heart. So let her beauty be in what? The hidden man of the heart. It also shows you that sometimes the scriptures can say man doesn't mean that women are not included. The most High deals with the men and the men deals with the women. So it's gonna say man first, all right? But we know this is talking about women. So the hidden man is what? In the spirit. If you want to know about the hidden man, men, brothers, and sisters, read Psalms, read Proverbs, read Ecclesiastes, and you learn about the hidden man, how to, how to deal with anger, hatred, malice, jealousy. All right? We all need to deal with that. Here it is. We got the biggest fringes, get the biggest beard. Woman got the longest dress with the biggest fringes, and she won't deal with the hidden man. Same thing with the brothers. Like I said, Proverbs, Psalms, Ecclesiastes. All right, deal with those books. Learn how to deal with the hidden man, the inward man. All right, yes, we have to keep the laws on the outside, but you have to deal with the anger, hatred, lust, jealousy. All right, these, are, these things are also taught in the law. All right, and that which is not corruptible. Here it is, clothes is corruptible. But a righteous heart is not corruptible. Even an ornament, meaning gift, of a meek and quiet spirit. So a woman's supposed to have a what? A meek and quiet spirit. She's supposed to be quiet. She's supposed to have a humble spirit. 
you know, a beautiful thing is to have a woman that's shy, that is very, very humble. All right, that's the type of woman you want. Not a loud mouth woman yelling and screaming and causing trouble. Scripture said an ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. That's how a woman's supposed to be. Which is in the sight of God a, of a great price. So a woman like that is worth a lot. She's a virtuous woman that's worth more than rubies, more than gold. So you sisters, this is how this is how you're supposed to be. If you don't have a meek and quiet spirit, all right, then you're in error. You're going against the laws of the Most High. Not up here on Facebook or YouTube arguing with men. That's that's not a meek and quiet spirit. You like to talk a lot. You like to, you know, cause trouble. You're not you're not a woman of you're not a daughter of Sarah. You're not a woman of God. All right. And brothers, I'm going to tell you, when you see this, do not deal with those type of women. Until she humbles herself and keep these commandments and do what a woman's supposed to do, do not deal with her. And if you have a wife that's out of order, you know, get yourselves in order. Show her the scriptures. Show her the scriptures of how she's supposed to be. And if she don't want to get in order, Matthew's 18, bring her to counsel. Get two of my witnesses, all right, and solve the matter, all right. If she didn't commit adultery, you can't just put her away like that. You have to correct her to scriptures, and if she don't want to hear it, Matthew's 18. All right, that's how you deal with that situation. For after this manner in old time, the holy women, so we had holy women in the ancient world, in the old time, also who trusted in the most high God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. So the ancient women were doing what? being a subjection unto their own husbands. Here it is, a woman go to her job, listens to her boss, obeys her boss, does everything the boss says to her. Doesn't talk back, because she knows she'll get fired, right? You're supposed to, a woman's supposed to treat her husband the same way. We're not equal, we're not in the same plane. plane. That doesn't mean you're stupid, doesn't mean you don't have the same knowledge I do as your husband do, because we're not talking about knowledge, we're talking about order, all right? We're talking about order. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, so Sarah did what? Obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. So what is the husband? To the wife, Lord. And she called him Lord, all right? There's nothing wrong with that. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well. So if a sister is not calling her husband Lord, not being in subjection unto her husband, then she's not a daughter of Sarah. She's a daughter of Satan. That's who she is, whether she's an Israelite or not. Even though she's a she's of that lineage. I don't care if she claims to be in the truth. If she's not doing what Sarah did, calling her husband Lord, dealing with him as her Lord, and being obedient, then she's not a daughter of Sarah. Point blank. Alright? And as you do well, and are not afraid. Don't be afraid to call your husband Lord. Don't be afraid to obey your husband. Women ask all these foolish questions about obeying their husbands instead of just doing what the scriptures say all right if your husband is wicked by you being righteous you could possibly bring him in and get him to be righteous all right by him watching you be righteous we've had cases of women with wicked husbands who women did their job and what happened the husband converted and came into the truth all right all right so it says Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, and deal with them according to the scriptures. Giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel. The weaker vessel is talking about the sister that, that don't believe. All right? It's just as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers not be hindered. So here it is. If a, if a man and woman want their prayers to be answered, they got to be righteous according to the scriptures in marriage. Finally, be ye of all one mind, meaning man, a husband and wife supposed to be of one mind, having compassion, one of another, love as brethren, be cur be pitiful, be courteous. All right, so that's what we're supposed to do in marriage: love, love each other like we're brothers, not rendering evil for evil. So here it is: you got a husband and wife; they're both being evil to one another. One does something wrong, the other one does something wrong. One says something wrong. One says something out of line, the other one says something back. No, somebody has to be the bigger man. Just because someone is saying wicked stuff to you don't mean you gotta respond back wickedly, all right? Be righteous.
you know, love his brother. All right? You got a wicked wife, that don't mean you be wicked too. Sisters, you got a wicked husband, don't mean you be wicked also. Keep the commandments. All right? Or railing for railing. What does it mean to rail? It means to yell, scream. But contrawise, blessing. That means bless each other, not curse each other. All right, a husband and wife are supposed to be blessing each other. All right, Shimon.